right, this is Vanessa with the latest update of ASEAN News. Shanana Guzmong met with the ASEAN Human Resources Development Chair. On Monday, 28th of August 2023, Bob Aubrey, Chair of the Advisory of the ASEAN Human Development Organization, met with Timorese Prime Minister Kairala Shanana Guzmaun to discuss the capacity building of the ASEAN Nations members, including provide human resources training for Timor Leste. On the meeting, Shanana campaigned by Timorese Secretary of State for Social Communication, HPD Tudia Shimenez, and the Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs for ASEAN Issue, Milena Rangel. Mr. Aubrey expressed that he is pleased to have met with Timorese Prime Minister Shanana Guzmaun and they have talked about few main issues during the meeting. Timor Leste condemns Myanmar expelling of top diplomat to leave Myanmar. A press release on August 26, 2023 informed that the Timor Leste's government condemned Myanmar Junta's decision to expel Timorese Charged Affairs, Avelino Pereira, from Myanmar and ordered him to leave the country on 1st of September 2023. The Myanmar's decision is a protest against Timor Leste and considers Timorese President of Republic Jose Ramazorta and Prime Minister Shanana Guzmaun in the position of opposing the military coup and massacre in Myanmar. Local media have tried to confirm the issue with the office of the Timorese President, but there was no response. Timorese's position so far supporting the ASEAN and United Nations, which prioritizing the importance of all efforts to restore democracy in Myanmar. Timor Leste also expressed solidarity for Myanmar's people and urges the military junta to respect human rights and find a peaceful and constructive solution to the crisis in Myanmar. Timor Leste commemorates 24th anniversary referendum day. Timor Leste celebrates the 24th anniversary of the 1999 referendum on 30 of August 2023. The historical event celebration is to remind Timor Leste new generation. At the moment, Timor Leste took part in a referendum and organized by the United Nations Administration in East Timor or UNAMED. 30th of August 1999, majority of Timorese voted to be independent from Indonesia's 24 years occupation. The result of the referendum shown 78% of voters rejected a special autonomy proposed by the Indonesian government instead choose to break up from Indonesia. Poll result was a total shock to Indonesia and a period of violence followed after the referendum in which over 1400 Timorese were killed and on 19 of October 1999 the Indonesian government officially accepted the result and abolished the law that formerly annexed East Timor to Indonesia. And on 20th of May 2002 Timor Leste officially restored its independence. Thailand Prime Minister discusses overcoming divisions with former coup leader. Thai Prime Minister Shreta Thavisin discussed overcoming political divisions with predecessor Prayut Chan Ocha in his first meeting as a premier as he prepares to form a cabinet from a crowded 11-party alliance that includes fierce rivals. He, former Prime Minister Prayut chan -Ocha, expressed his concern for the hometown, Thailand, as a humble individual who has been appointed to be Prime Minister, I went to meet and consult about whether he had anything for me to contribute to the hometown. It was charming of him to take me on the tour of the government house. Shreta sailed through a parliamentary vote to become Premier and will head a tricky coalition that includes parties backed by the military, which has repeatedly maneuvered to topple governments led by his Thai party. The new government will then have to deliver their policy objectives to a joint session of Parliament before they can start work in late September. The United Kingdom Foreign Minister meets President of the Philippines to boost bilateral ties. British Foreign Secretary James Cleverly met with Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and his counterparts during a visit to Manila. Cleverly and his team of delegates paid a courtesy call to Marcos at the presidential palace where the British Foreign Minister said he looks forward to enhancing relations with the Philippines including trade ties. It is an exciting time for our uh, bilateral relationship. The UK-Philippines Advanced Partnership uh, benefits our peoples. Uh, and it includes work on uh, climate change, on trade, on science and technology, and on our shared security, both in the physical realm and in the digital realm. The United Kingdom is an important, long-standing partner of the Philippines. 
especially in this time of geographic changes, economic disruptions, and challenges to the rule of law. Foreign Secretary Cleverly's visit to Manila, the first British Foreign Secretary to do so since 2016, heartens us since it also signals the strengthening of our bilateral ties in trade, investment, security, maritime cooperation, and other fields. Cleverly also held a meeting with the Philippines Foreign Affairs Secretary, Enrico Manalo, where they discussed a range of issues involving the promotion of bilateral trade, security, defense, and climate change. Cleverly met with Philippine Coast Guard officials and discussed about maritime patrols and the environment. According to the website of the British Embassy in Manila, bilateral trade between the Philippines and the UK in 2022 were 2 point billion euros or $2.59 billion. United Nations says hundreds of thousands trafficked by criminal gangs in Southeast Asia. The United Nations said in a report hundreds of thousands of people are being trafficked by criminal gangs and forced to work in scam centers and other illegal online operations that have sprung across Southeast Asia in recent years. Hundreds of thousands of people are being forcibly engaged by organized criminal gangs into online criminality in Southeast Asia, from romance investment scams and crypto fraud to illegal gambling. Victims face a range of serious violations and abuses, including threats to their safety and security, and many have been subjected to torture and cruel, inhumane and degrading treatment or punishment, arbitrary detention, sexual violence, forced labour and other human rights abuses. The report cited credible sources estimating that at least 120,000 people across Myanmar and around 100,000 in Cambodia may be trapped in scam operations with other criminal-owned enterprises in Laos, the Philippines and Thailand, ranging from crypto fraud to online gambling. Credible sources indicate that at least 120,000 people across Myanmar may be held in situations where they are forced to carry out online scams, with estimates in Cambodia similarly at 100,000. Other states in the region, including Lao PDR, the Philippines and Thailand, have also been identified as main countries of destination or transit where at least tens of thousands of people have been involved. These scam centres generate revenues amounting to billions of US, US dollars each year. Most people trafficked into the online scam operations are men, although women and adolescents are also among the victims, the report says. Most are not citizens of the countries in which, in which the trafficking occurs. Victims come from across the ASEAN region. So that is from Indonesia, Lao, PDR, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam, as well as mainland China, Hong Kong and Taiwan, South Asia and either further afield from Africa and Latin America. The United Nations Human Rights Office report was one of the most detailed of phenomenon that has emerged since the COVID-19 pandemic, fueled by closure of casinos that prompted moves into less regulated areas in Southeast Asia. The UN Human Rights Office called on regional governments to strengthen rule of law and tackle corruption to break the cycle of impunity that allows criminal enterprises to thrive. Passenger helped deliver baby girl mid-flight in Myanmar. Passengers abroad to local Myanmar KBZ flight from Tachi Lake to Yangon assisted a pregnant woman in giving birth to a girl. A witness said the incident occurred 20 minutes after takeoff from Tachi Lake and despite the absence of medical aid or a doctor, fellow passengers successfully helped the mother in delivering a baby girl. The mother and newborn were sent back to Tachi Lake for medical attention and were reported to be in good health. Air KBZ is a privately owned domestic Myanmar airline based in Yangon. Air Kambauza, otherwise known as Air KBZ, was established in June 2010. Japanese residents hold protests against nuclear polluted wastewater dumping into sea. 
over 500 Japanese residents from across the country gathered in Fukushima Iwaki city to protest against the discharge into the sea of the nuclear contaminated wastewater from the rocket Fukushima nuclear power plant. The protesters came from 375 civil groups nationwide, demanding an immediate stop to the discharge which started on this Thursday. However, the Japanese government unilaterally decided to discharge the millions of tons of nuclear contaminated wastewater into the sea in 2021 despite domestic and international opposition. We will never forgive the Japanese government for breaking its commitment to the people. I think their discharging not only betrays the Japanese people, but also goes against the international community. Therefore, I firmly oppose it. Some protesters say they believe that TEPCO conducting tests on the concentration of tritium in the waters nearby the plant of discharging was trying to deceive itself as it didn't test other radioactive substances nor take factors like bioconcentration into consideration. The discharge process may last 30 to 40 years which will cause unpredictable damage and hazard to the global marine environment and the health and well-being of the people around the world. South Korean condemns Japan dumping nuclear contaminated water into ocean. Tens of thousands of South Koreans gathered in the capital city of Seoul to protest against Japan's discharge of nuclear contaminated wastewater into the sea. Around 15,000 people from all walks of life, including members of political parties and a civic group on stopping Japan's discharge of nuclear polluted water, held a massive rally in downtown Seoul condemning Japan's dumping of radioactive wastewater into the ocean. The protesters also condemned the South Korean government's irresponsible attitude for letting Japan to do what it wishes in terms of the release. Protesters said the extremely selfish act of Japan will result in irreversible damage to the sea and their life and question who will be responsible for the consequences decades later. The protesters urged the Japanese government to immediately terminate the discharge while demanding immediate actions from the South Korean government to stop Japan's dumping. The protesters also expressed discontent with their government's role in Japan's efforts to push the dumping plan, citing Yoon suk yeol administration's inaction in addressing public concerns regarding this matter. Indonesia's Greater Jakarta LRT system finally launches after delays. Indonesia's high-speed rail line, or LRT, Light Rapid Transit launched on Monday, August 28, following a series of delays and security issues that marked the Chinese-funded project. And today, alhamdulillah, thank God, the LRT, Light Rail Transit, is ready to operate from Harjamukti, Cibubur, and Bekasi to Jakarta for 41 kilometers and cost a budget of 32.6 trillion Indonesian rupiah. We are always included in the top 10 most congested cities in the world. Every day, 996,000 vehicles enter Jakarta. Therefore, there are traffic jams. Pollution is always here in Jakarta. The project, which is part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, was originally set to be completed by 2019, but has been beset by problems including a 1.2 billion cost overrun and delays on its commercial operation. Chinese President Xi Jinping told President Joko Widodo during the Indonesian leaders' trip to China last month that both countries must ensure the project adheres to high standards as it nears completion. Thank you very much for heading in today, everyone. We would like to wish you a very happy weekend and see you soon.